Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now, a new Battlegrounds meta is about to start. Well, we still have a day or so, but a lot of people have already been asking me who are going to be the MVPs for the upcoming week. And, well, let's take a look at it, let's break it down, what's going to be different, what's going to be new, what's going to work that didn't before, and so on and so forth. Right, so we're still going to be dealing with Decay, Attack Tactic, and Sugar Pill Defensive Tactic. That by definition means that majority of the good attackers are going to be exactly the same that we already had. And that will also mean that majority of the good defenders will be exactly the same that we already had. However, there are obviously some changes. So far we had Prey on the Weak and Staggering Beauty. So basically we gained staggers and opponent had an extra MD to them. This time around, we're going to have to deal with Hazard Shift, Bleed and Shock, and kind of good defense, which actually in most cases will help us, because our well-timed blocks will place random debuff, weakness, armor break, suppression, or disorient on the opponent for 13 seconds, and in vast majority of the matchups, that will be a good thing, especially as we parry the opponent, we're inflicting weakness, that also means that, you know, Hazard Shift debuffs are going to be less potent, if we're inflicting disorient, I wish I knew how potent the Disorient is, but also we would be getting less Hazard, hazard Ship debuffs placed on us with that. So, I do have a sneaking suspicion that significantly more champions will work than we initially think because of this node, with the combination of Inequity, Weakness, and Disorient. I think Hazard Shift will be quite survivable for a lot of, you know, very heavy champions, or champions that just do not have too high of a hit count, or maybe have slight ability accuracy reduction themselves however obviously here the main goal is to use the decay tactic in order to combat hazard shift as uh placebo buffs uh we are immune to that obviously that's there but the main point here is attackers gain 35 percent resistance to damage or time effects for each debuff on a defender on the defender and here with parries we can place debuffs on the defenders uh, so pretty much all not most of the decay attack tactic so that is right here champions will effectively work there will be some champions here in some matchups that will not necessarily do as well or at the very least you will have to be more careful champions that either do not inflict debuffs initially or immediately or that don't have too many of the debuffs like hate bishop for instance you know if you're going to use with uh her with the cold snap arrow, initially not really placing those debuffs on the opponent, so you will have to play slower, rely on the node to inflict a few different debuffs on the opponent uh, in order to be able to combat hazard shift. And similarly to Hulk, because Hulk does not place debuffs at the beginning of the fight, so you're gonna want to do like parry few hits, parry few hits, and then go ham on the opponent. But effectively, every decay champion will work here, and obviously. Beautiful defenders. However, kind of ironically, one of the biggest threats on defense now will be void. Typically, big voids is going to be something you will want to ban immediately. Because even though he's a decay attack tactic champion, which means he's going to be relatively decent and good on offense, much more so than normally, because you're going to get extra debuffs that will give you extra damage and extra willpower healing reversal. There will be additional thing that you need to worry about Void is because when Void is going to go on defense, you're going to get your Hazard Shift debuffs placed on you, even if you are using a Decay Attack Tactic Champion, and Decay doesn't nullify Void's damage. So that is going to be big tip number one. Definitely prepare your Voids, and if you see a 7-star rank 2 or maxed out 5-star, you probably want to ban that unless you have one for yourself. Right, moving on. Some champions that will be significantly better offensively. Number one is going to be Kingpin. Quite simple. Kingpin plus Hazard Shift always is a good time. Because you're going to get your Hazard Shift debuffs on you. You're going to be converting them into uh, overpowers and rages. And that's going to give you more combat power rate. That's going to give you more attack. And Kingpin is going to be a bit of a maniac as well. Another champion, even though she is a decay attacker. Which is super helpful. Jabari Panther is going to be crazy good. Be afraid of Jabari Panthers. If somebody has a 7th star Jabari Panther, this is your time to celebrate because obviously Hazard Shift will allow Jabari Panther to ramp up incredibly quickly. Not only that, obviously, she will be purifying the buffs that are coming her way. 
all the time so she's going to be one of the few very 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 good counters to void alongside mantis and uh yeah she's going to be very fast and very dangerous in this meta as a decay attacker for sure uh, another sneaky shout out that i wanted to give is havoc because with havoc obviously hazard shift shock and bleed yes havoc doesn't really deal with bleed well or at all however whenever you get a few shocks on havoc you will start melting opponent with your plasma charges because as you are taking the energy damage, you're going to be building up your plasmas. And as that is happening, your opponent is going to be taking a ton of damage, especially if you activate your heavy attack, you're simultaneously giving him quite a lot of feedback damage. And he has quite a massive energy resistance, which means he's not going to be taking much damage from those shocks as well. So I do suspect Havoc is going to be quite a solid two-way champion. I do plan on adding one to my deck. Archangel is still going to work just fine because you're going to be shutting nodes down fast. I do think that Storm could potentially be one of the cheesier, nukier attackers as well, foreseeing that there still could be quite a lot of skilled champions present. Obviously, with Storm and her shock immunity, whenever Hazard Shift would trigger, she will be gaining a ton of prowess very quickly. And the cool thing is that with her heavy attacks, you can pause those prowesses. They never really have to expire in a fight for the most part, which means you can also potentially avoid triggering the sugar pill defensive tactic in many, many instances. So I do think a lot of people will be trying out Storm. I'm not super sure if it's going to work out great, but in theory, it should be quite cool. And then there is an obvious problem. This is going to be another champion you utmost definitely want to get rid of because Ghost. Getting damage over time effects on her, thus getting furies, thus nuking down uh, a lot. So if you see a rank 5 ghost, ban that stuff. <laughs> it's not going to be good. Whenever you see hazard chip, yeah, ghost is not going to be great for it. But uh, perhaps more important champion. I genuinely think Nebula is going to wreck things up because not only she is bleed and shock immune, right? Whenever she would be shocked, she gains 5 charges. And then whenever you parry, you just can do a ton of damage. So I do think Nebula is going to be an absolute nuke in this meta. Forget your Wave Visions, forget your Shockers, forget all the other modern 2023 tech wannabe fail projects. Go back to where it's from Nebula. If you have a 6-star rank 4, definitely advise you to put her in your deck. I'm probably taking mine to rank 4 for this meta because I am quite confident on this one. Uh, she should be able to absolutely destroy stuff. Just putting it on there. Right. And then obviously we still have the Absor Absorbing Man in the Mystic class as well. As Absorbing Man in his Uru form is <coughs> Shock and Bleed Immune. And as you are going to be triggering the Shock Immunity and Bleed Immunity, it is going to be much, much easier to play Absorbing Man. Uh, because you're going to keep your forms paused with your Forms consistently being paused, you're going to be able to ramp up quicker, thus he will do more damage than he normally would. And yeah, it should overall be quite a good time, not to mention that Absorbing Man in itself doesn't have any buffs in his kit against her, uh, just like Nebula as well, so, you know, both of them should be quite fine when it comes to dealing with Sugar Pill itself, especially considering that Nebula will also have access to a decent power control and power lock based on how many shocks opponents have. And uh, yeah, again, Nebula sounds perfect for this one. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised nobody mentioned this before or people haven't been talking because everything in this kit seems about just about as perfect as you would want from like a non-decay attacker because Hazard Shift starts in the shock phase. So you just strike the opponent. You're going to get your shock. So you're going to get your 15, 20 charge very quickly. If you want, you can go for the massive nuke and finish the fight as soon as you reach level two. Or you can go for level one and with that level one obviously you can completely power drain and power lock the opponent which will eliminate your need to dex and if you don't need to dex there is no chance for sugar pill to activate so yeah uh let me know what you guys think but uh nebula definitely could be one of these secret mvps rank i i just handily have a three to four six star tech gem and nebula is getting one of those havoc is definitely going to get tried out obviously we have kingpin as well and uh aside from that Specifically talking about science class, I don't think there's any point in going to any non-decay champion, really. Uh, because, you know, why would you? Uh, and in skill class, pretty much the same. You know, 
most of the a lot of the good skill champions are decay attackers to begin with so that's perfectly fine and then you know in mutant class you're probably not going to be running many of those tech class we have a couple of new mvps here already additionally you know people will obviously still likely choose to run some other champions too especially because not every defender we're going to be facing will be decay and uh yeah that is more or less what i expect of this meta it is going to be kind of similar in many ways but again there will be few other new total nukes coming in i do think this meta is going to be much much more aggressive in a sense um but let me know what do you guys think <laughs> and uh well best of luck in finishing up this season i'm gonna see you guys soon bye bye Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the